Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first TD Mobile webinar. I am your host, Martin Thies. I'm the product manager for TD Mobile, and I'm going to uh, host you during this webinar today. We are talking about simplifying mobile enterprise application development today. Thank you for joining us all over the world. A few words about Kupcha Technologies first. Our business is simplifying software development and databases since 1983. So we are <clears throat> almost a veteran of simplification of software development and database development. We developed the first Unix database server, the first Windows database server, and the first Windows IDE, which was SQL Windows in the early 90s. Our headquarters are in Roseville, California, so we are a US-based company. The agenda today, I am going to talk about the benefits of TD Mobile, and then my colleague Horst de Lorenzi, our manager of GUI product development, will give you a live demonstration of TD Mobile. After that, we will do an extensive question and answer session, and I would like to ask you to put your questions into the Q&A tool of WebEx that you can find on the uh, WebEx menu, so that we can uh, we don't forget any questions and we can work through them uh, one to one after one. We might, you know, even if you put in questions during the webinar, we will answer them in the question and answer session towards the end of this webinar. TD Mobile is one development system that integrates heterogeneous skills and technologies to simplify HTML5, JavaScript, mobile web enterprise application development. And here are the main benefits. benefits. Simplifying the complex from cumbersome to simple. Traditionally, <clears throat> there was no easy way to manage the different technologies like JavaScript, HTML5, CSS style sheets, jQuery controls, PHP, JSON, Java.net on the back end. You had to have different skill sets, different tools to work on these things, you know, from um, simple um, character editors for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to .NET development uh, tools like um, Google Studio. With TD Mobile, you get everything put into one system, one easy-to-use package um, for your users and developers. Then there is the complexity of data transfer for business applications, particularly complex applications. How do you code the communication between the back-end web services and the front-end application. That involves um, you know, almost a bitwise JSON um, programming. Um, it involves JavaScript programming. And with TD Mobile, you get intelligent data binding for click quickly creating data-centric applications. With uh, the old model, you have time-consuming, low-level coding. With uh, TD Mobile, you have no need for client-side coding. With um, traditional applications, you need to take care of screen size and device fragmentation. And with TD Mobile, you don't need to do that. Um, <clears throat> you don't need to maintain multiple templates for every device and generate device-specific code. With TD Mobile, you, have, you can use one development team for one application, you have one source code file that results in one application that will run on all your mobile devices. And that can be you know, um, mobile smartphones, tablets, tablets, laptops, and even desktop computers. So one source code for all mobile platforms. Build one single app one time and run on all mobile devices, including smartphones, tablets, and tablets. Here are a few screenshots of how a simple app can look on a smartphone. This is a screenshot from an iPhone running one application. That's uh, a list view in, coming from the database. The same thing looking like this on an iPad mini, and the same thing looking like this on a um, Samsung Galaxy Tab. Now, the nice thing is that these browser-based applications do also run on desktop browsers. So you can um, support your Windows users, Mac users, and even Linux users, if you like. 
with TD Mobile, simplifying was one of our key goals that we wanted to reach when we bring this product to market. And I think we, we did reach that quite nicely. And here's one of the main things why we think that TD Mobile is such a big benefit. Groundbreaking new technology to very easily bind GUI objects to backend data sources. You don't have to do any JavaScript or HTML programming. Connect easily to any backend database or web service to bind in all your software services such as CRM, financials, and more. So no JavaScript or HTML programming required at all. You don't need um, Notepad++ or so to design your web pages and then um, debug them and see how they look on mobile devices. To bind a data source to a GUI object, you just have to select the binding from a provided list, so point-and-click process that does not involve programming. So basically, your mobile applications can talk to your backend services very easily without JSON or JavaScript programming. The backend operations tie in any required enterprise data source. You can directly talk to databases like Oracle, SQL Server, Sybase, our SQL base, and others. You can tie in existing solutions that you or your customers are using, like SAP, Salesforce, financials, via web services, for example. You can um, directly talk to web services that are self-made, solution-provided, or available as a software as a service uh, implementation from your solution providers. So. Any backend um, data source you can easily tie into uh, your TD Mobile application. TD Mobile applications are high, highly secure applications. They provide theft and loss protection as no data is kept on mobile device. They, protect, they provide sniffing protection through high-end SSL encryption of data and pages between mobile device and web server. So if you like, no data that goes back and forth between the device and your data set can be sniffed because of high-end SSL encryption. And another nice thing is built-in user and role authentication that you can easily use from scratch in building your applications. With TD Mobile, you can combine your data with device features. For example, you can retrieve the current GPS position. You can use that to open that position in the Maps application of the device for navigation to that address, for example. For example, if a salesperson wants to navigate to a customer, he can simply select that data from the database, tap on the address, and navigate there. Or, for example, save the current GPS position for work documentation tasks. You can document work processes. You can take a video or photo and upload to the back end. Or you can choose an existing photo or video and upload that one to the back end as well. Now, here's a real customer application that shows how that might look like. You see, on this page, there is a latitude and longitude um, entrance at the top there. This is the GPS position of that um, device. And then for documentation purposes, you get a before picture of the work site and an after picture of the work site, so you can nicely document the work that has been done, including the GPS position of where that happened. With TD Mobile, you can turn data into touch-enabled information. You can create map links, you can create email links, you can create SMS text message links, and you can create phone links. So for example, you have a, an application screen there on the left that has a phone number on it. You tap on that phone number and you trigger the phone application of the mobile device. And you can trigger a call right away. You can also tap on the email address, and you can start writing an email. Or you can tap on the address here, which is an, uh, a link, 
and it will open the Maps application. And using the Maps application, you can navigate to that place. You can, for example, find our office in Roseville, California, and you know, help let your phone find the location for you. TD Mobile take control over the publishing and maintenance process. You have one place to publish your application. You have one place to maintain and update your application. Excuse me, go back there. TD Mobile applications are deployed to an IIS web server and not to an app store that requires an approval process that you don't have control over. Users access the applications via an icon. With TD Mobile, all your users are always using an up-to-date application. They never need to install the latest app version from an app store or company site. That's very important. Just think about if you're, you know, the tax rates are changing and you want every user to use a new module that uh, has the new tax rate in them, in them. And you better make sure everybody is using this new module. TV Mobile saves you money and time. HTML5 JavaScript mobile web apps are the most cost effective way of building mobile enterprise applications. TD Mobile adds to that by requiring only one skill set and one tool to cover all mobile platforms and mobile devices. For those of you that have been using Team Developer in the past, you can reuse your Team Developer business logic. You can call existing Team Developer web services. You can include business logic APLs, libraries from your um, existing team developer projects. And of course, call any .NET assembly, including .NET framework classes, to write your uh, business logic that is going to be used in uh, TD Mobile. We do offer free online training via the Gupta Academy. You can learn at your own pace whenever you want. The uh, Gupta Academy is available 24 hours, seven days a week. You can register with our website at guptatechnologies.com slash tdmobile, and we will send you an account login details, and from there on you can learn TD Mobile whenever you want. Here's what customers are saying, and I need to say that the customers that provided these quotes are customers that have applications in production today. Here's one, with TD Mobile, building a mobile business application was simple and straightforward. That is coming from Brian Buhler, president of PowerPoint Systems in the United States. TD Mobile enabled us to not have to write a single line of HTML5 or JavaScript code and to reuse our application code, web services, and .NET assemblies, which greatly accelerated development of the new mobile app. That's Matthias Lüling, developer at AppleWeb in Germany. We were impressed with the ease and speed at which we were able to develop the app with TD Mobile and the simplicity of connecting the data from our core QPRAID system with the location tracking GPS features of the device. Of the device. Edward Forrest, CEO of Continental Software Services in the United Kingdom. So you see TD Mobile applications are in production over the world already. And with that, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Kosti Lorenzi, who is going to show you TD Mobile live in action now. Uh, first, I have to apologize for the black borders around the uh, TD Mobile. It seems to be something that WebEx is doing for uh, the application. Uh, my name is Kosti Lorenzi. I'm part of uh, development for a team developer on TD Mobile here at Supta. I'm going to give you a quick tour of uh, the TD Mobile 1.0 product, which is what you can see in front of you right now on the screen. As you can see, um, the IDE, which is what this is, is based on a very easy to use system of having a ribbon bar at the top uh, for your menuing system. An explorer pane down the left side for all of your high level objects in the application. And then a context sensitive main pane here, which displays uh, content based on what you have selected over on the left side. There's a lot of handy usability features 
built into the IDE, such as the ability to place bookmarks on, a, on an object in the application, quickly um, return to that bookmark later. There's a very robust find and replace system where these are all docking windows that can be undocked and slid around or rearranged uh, as you like. And also um, has a lot of built-in features that are harder to see but very powerful, like, uh, for example, the ID is multi-threaded so that if you're performing an operation that takes a long time, like a compilation or publish, uh, the ID is still responds to you to continue working. Uh, it supports selective compilation so that if you only are changing something on the client path of your app, it will only regenerate the HTML, or if you're only changing something on the server half, it will only regenerate the, the .NET server portion. It also uses an XML-based file system to store your code, which is very easy to understand. Um, it's uh, very easy to check in with a source control system or a file that's here. Um, finally, with regard to the ID as a whole, it is available in a number of different languages. Right now I'm showing it in English, but you can also switch to German, French, Japanese, Dutch, Portuguese, or Spanish. This is actually the, the language of the IDE itself, not the language of the application you're developing. So we built this from the beginning to be uh, usable around the world. Let me show you um, a little bit more about how you navigate around the IDE. As I mentioned, you have your top-level object on the left, and when you click on that, you will get a list view pane showing the objects of that type. For example, these are server-side functions, which I can easily add by clicking the plus. I can switch between icon and outline views or the list view. I can also click on the new object once it's created and edit it here. Most of the code is stored in preview format, which eliminates coding errors and uh, allows you to be a lot more productive um, than trying to test things out by hand and worrying about indentation and so on. So we have list views for constants and variables and uh, classes and so on. When you select a page, a web page, you get a slightly different, uh, slightly more complicated thing here on the left. You can see that we clearly divide the contents of the page into a client portion and a server portion. The client portion is what ends up on your uh, the client side of the application, meaning the HTML, the JavaScript, the um, CSS, and so on. And the server part is what ends up on the server side of the application. So even though this is two different worlds, uh, we make it very easy for you to think of the page as a whole by organizing them together in one pane in the IDE. You have to think in terms of what the web page has and does. Unlike a lot of other environments where you're switching between tools all the time, first to work on the HTML, HTML, and then to work on maybe um, some of the server-side programming is a different tool. Here it's all integrated together and easy to see and easy to follow and understand. The web page pane has um, three tabs within it. The first one was the actual code or viewing the web page from a code standpoint. The second one is your designer pane where you lay out what the page looks like. And the third is a preview pane where it'll show you a live preview in an embedded browser so you can see uh, the effect of any um, CSS or other things you've applied to the page. We made the ability to design the page very easy um, through an automatic layout system. You simply switch to the layout pad on the ribbon bar, select one of your controls, and drop it on the page, and it snaps into position automatically. There's a kind of background stack panel here so that as I drop more pages or more controls down, they each just stack up automatically below each other. 
and I can move them around, rearrange them. But I'm not sitting fussing over HTML, fussing over one thing to be one pixel uh, to the left or right, so on. And then you have a context sensitive properties window, which can float or be docked, where you edit um, the properties of all your controls. So we do offer a basic text control button, radio button, flip switches. Um, the HTML control is a generic component allowing you to place in whatever raw HTML you want in that part of the page. A meter control, links, which is what Martin demoed, where you can click on a phone number or an address and pop open um, certain features of the mobile device. Pictures, combo box, checkbox, and data field for entering in data. We also help simplify the page design by offering an integrated caption. So for example, this data field, if I put in name, I get a caption next to it uh, or above it, and it reduces the number of controls I have to design and be moving along the page. Of course, you may want something a lot more complicated than this, and so we do have all these container controls too. Uh, maybe most importantly, a layout grid, which uh, allows you to have one or more columns and rows into which I can then move um, my control, including I can put layout grids inside the cell of a layout grid. So you really have almost complete control over the layout, but as you can see, it's very fast, very simple. You spend your time being productive and not messing around with a lot of low-level editing. We also have a group box for group, uh, grouping together controls, and list view controls for showing um, collections of records of data, frame, expander control, which allows you to show and hide certain regions, and a navigation bar, which you can back at the top or bottom uh, and allow you to uh, create a navigation system for your application. Um, the PD Mobile uh, product also has native support for localization built right into the IDE. So for example, right now you can see we're in English mode here, but if I take this button and I, well, let me switch to German first. I take this button and give it a new uh, caption. I can now see that if I switch back to English, it, it knows that this button will show one way on an English device and it'll show a different way on a German device. That's happened automatically, that happened automatically at one time um, within, our, within our code. So by simply switching between languages, I can pull multiple different, I wouldn't even say code, I can design multiple different languages for each page without touching the line of code. Um, and finally, I should talk about the support for having multiple displays. Right now, I'm looking at a phone display, but if I wanted, for example, uh, this application to look slightly differently, if it was viewed on a tablet, I can simply add a tablet display, and now I can go and um, I can move things around on my tablet display, rearrange things, uh, give things new captions, and it's going to be tracking all these changes separately per display. So I can give a very different user experience um, for each kind of display device without actually recoding anything or touching any of the code or logic of the pages. One of the core features of TD Mobile is the concept of bindings, as Martin mentioned. Bindings are a kind of uh, magic variable or super variable that helps organize the flow of data from the server to the client and from the client back to the server. You can see they're defined here within the web page outline, and I can just create a binding of any uh, elemental type. And also, if I have classes defined, I can define these off of classes. Once I have a binding in existence, it's very simple to um, take a control like this data field and just bind it to the binding. And now, if the binding has a value, it will show up in the data field, or if I enter a value in the data field, it will be populated into the binding. And then, 
in a similar way for my server-side operation, if I have a number parameter, I can bind it to that binding. And so when I invoke that operation, the data from the binding automatically flows in. Same thing uh, on the return value. And just like that, without any coding, I've got data flowing to and from the server and to and from the control using these bindings. There's a lot of uh, features and power behind these bindings. I can uh, establish validation rules to make sure that they're okay. I can uh, set rules about when they're considered true or false, and I can branch on that in my client side uh, scripting and have custom equations for when they're true or false. I can set the initial value. I can also store them in the local browser database uh, for a kind of offline mode or uh, to restore some kind of state when the user comes back. There's a lot of features, more than I can talk about here, uh, involved with the binding. Um, there is, of course, a need to have some kind of logic running on the client side of the application. And to help support that, we have come up with a system of scripting commands that we call event actions. And you can see here, you simply add an event to a control, like this click. And under there, I have a choice of uh, more than a dozen or about a dozen of these event action commands, including ones to pop up message boxes, invoke uh, server-side operation, navigate to new pages, invoke JavaScript, branch on binding values, and on and on and on. So these right here are what allow you to design the behavior on the client side of the application without ever touching a single line of JavaScript that you need to understand in JavaScript. Of course, there's also the server half, as you saw me um, doing here with this operation. This is all located on the server node. We have two different types of objects that can go here, uh, functions and operations. Functions are sort of internal um, to the server, like utilities or tools that you can write. And operations are exposed to the call from the client app of each web page. These things are compiled into .NET, uh, native .NET web services. And that is how they exist on the server. The actual programming language is our own language from Team Developer, which is a very rich and robust language that's been around for um, decades now, called SAL. And with SAL, you have access to hundreds of functions for string manipulation and database interaction support for all the major backend, um, database backend, <clears throat> and uh, pretty much anything that you could want to do here on the server side from a business logic standpoint. We also offer free um, state management so that any global variables that you create uh, within your application are stored separately per session of the users so that you really literally can have um, a state for each user that exists between screens as they're navigating through the application. Normally, this is something you really have to think about and design uh, in other languages, but here it's basically invisible. Finally, the IDE has, integrated, has an integrated debugger. Let me pull up an existing um, application to show you. This is a little demo we have called Island. And if I simply hit go, it will uh, launch my CD Mobile application in my default browser. The uh, CD Mobile product comes integrated with IES Express and it's installed by default with the installer. And so it has loaded this application into IES Express and also attached a debugger to it at the same time. So for example, on my login screen here, Hello. Happen to know that it's going to invoke a login function. So if I put a breakpoint here on the first line, I can come back to my app and hit login. And you can see right away it switches back to the IDE and I can now um, step through my application. And I can also look at um, expressions that can call a lock window, look at the call stack, all the things you expect out of a modern debugger. 
And now I've logged in and you can see my application running here. So, CD Mobile also has integrated security so that um, you can define when the person logs in um, a user ID and a role for the user, and these things will be placed in an encrypted security cookie on the phone device. And from that point out, you have the ability per page to set and authenticate property for that page. And if that property is true, if they ever try and visit that page, we set to the security cookie. And if they don't have it, they are uh, redirected to the login page, which is the page that you define yourself in your application. So without any, uh, hardly any coding there, you can have a security model up and running, including a concept of role. You can define your own role, name your own role, assign roles to users, and then per page, you can specify a certain role that the user must have in order to be able to visit that page. And if they don't have the role, they will be directed to the not authorized page, which is one of your own selection, one of one of your own selections also. And then finally, really quickly, uh, this is all very high level, um, very 4GL, which is how we want it, but we know that there are people who really want to get down into the bits and bytes and take more control. So we do offer support for importing your own style sheets. And if you bring up the style sheet, we have an integrated color coded CSS editor. We can edit the style sheets right here within the IDE. And in a similar way, you can also import your own uh, JavaScript code, and we have a color-coded uh -huh. JavaScript editor. Finally, you can import uh, .NET assemblies and to, to be used by the server-side portion of the application. Choose one from the DAC on your computer, or choose one uh, from a specific file. Once you've imported the symbols, into your application, they're accessible from all your certified code. And you also have the ability to create your own themes and uh, import them, allowing you to have complete visual control over the higher application, but not just the colors, but hover effects, uh, borders, border radiuses, uh, and so on. So that is my, my whirlwind tour of the IDE. Um, the first one is TD Mobile supports d.html and t.html. Will it support d.html as there's a sample provided in samples folder, but will the future version include desktop layout? Yeah. Well, I guess I can tell by the question that this is someone who already has TD Mobile and has been playing with it. <clears throat> um, just to give a very quick background, as you saw, we have very easy support for the different display types. So you can have a phone version of one particular page and a tablet version. And the way that gets uh, actually generated is by two different HTML files. One of the keys of the phone, one of the keys of the tablet. And our server side page router uh, automatically serves up the print version based on the device type. Right now, we're just supporting phone and tablet. There's no desktop support because a lot of the controls that we use are from jQuery mobile and there, there's inconsistent uh, results and how they look in the tool on desktop. So definitely um, it wouldn't surprise me if it's something that comes in the future, but it's not scheduled for for this year in any event. Now of course there's nothing that stops you from looking at a tablet page using a desktop browser. In fact, when I just launched that example a minute ago, that was running in my desktop uh, internet explorer. So nothing that's preventing anybody from using desktop apps. We're just not sort of natively supporting that from a terminology standpoint right now. Thank you. The next question is, will TD Mobile support charting and reporting in the near future, future or integrating solutions for high charts, JQ plus charting? Yeah. Yeah, so um, TD Mobile 1.1, which is targeted roughly for late spring, early summer, is going to have a native chart control in it. Um, 
and CD Mobile 1.2, which we are tentatively targeting for early fall, is going to have a recording solution. So I guess the answer is yes on both of those. That sounds good. So um, the questions come flying in. Um, just need to scroll to the right position here. Will TD Mobile apps in <clears throat> be integrated with payment systems like a credit card social network like LinkedIn and e-commerce system like eBay, flip chart, flip card over JSON? Yeah. Um, the, the answer, I guess, is for the moment, no. We're not going to integrate those systems right into the IDE and our sort of uh, runtime environment. But as you saw, you can um, put your own um, direct HTML using the custom HTML control. So you can embed the HTML needed for credit card processing um, or social network stuff. I know we have some examples of people have embedded YouTube videos and things like that. Really like so not natively, but I think it's very doable. Next one, will TD Mobile support jQuery Mobile 4.2.1? Um, not seeing that one. Are you doing it in chronological order? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going through it one by one. All right, wait, read it again. Will TD Mobile support jQuery Mobile version 4.2.1? Uh, it's interesting. I don't see that in my window. But um, we're not switching the jQuery Mobile version uh, for 1.1, which is just coming out in a couple of moments. After that, we do plan on you know, trying to stay pretty current with the jQuery Mobile version. Next one, can I consume the web service operations created by TD Mobile by, th by a third party plan? Yeah, so what I think um, he's referring to is the operations that are defined within each web page are actually uh, generated as .NET web services. Could those web services be consumed by uh, some other application. I've never tried that, um, never thought of trying that, so I can't really I can't really comment on it. Um, I, I would have to investigate that. I'm not sure. Okay, we need to come back to your side one. Then there's a question about SQL Connect.net that we do recommend using SQL Connect.net. It uses connection pooling. Does SQL Connect.net on TD6.2 work in the same way? Yes, uh, for those of you who are team developer users, the style language um, that is in the, that you use in the server side part of your TD Mobile application is the exact same language, the same .NET runtime that Team Developer 6.2 uses. So we only have one people connect that .NET function. Uh, it's the same one for both products. Next one is out. We already have written business objects in TD6.2. How can I consume them in the server part of TD Mobile? Online as .NET Assembly or even as .APD, COM, or SOAP web service? Well, it should be pretty easy. You can compile your 6.2 uh, logic into a .NET Assembly, a Steam Developer .NET Assembly, and you can import that directly into TD Mobile and call that code. Or you can compile your 60 uh, business logic into a web service natively with the developer, and you can remove that from the server half of your TD Mobile application. The next question is um, Will TD Mobile be integrated with cloud applications like Amazon Web Service? Not, it, it won't be integrated natively. No. There may be a way to code that solution yourself, but you're not, not in the next uh, one or two years you're probably going to consider that natively. Can we utilize the 2D scanner on the iPhone? That sounds like barcode scanning. 
Yeah. It, uh, when I read that, I wasn't sure what the scanner meant. I didn't know iPhone had scanning. Um, I, I guess I'm going to interpret that as meaning can you scan 2D barcodes on the iPhone. Uh, there's a number of different solutions to doing that. Um, you can take a picture and um, send the picture to a server-side operation and the phone number of .NET um, uh, assemblies or modules for decoding the barcode. There's also <clears throat> some JavaScript libraries, free ones on the internet, which will allow you to take an image uh, from the camera and scan it for a barcode. Uh, finally, there are little um, Bluetooth add-ons for mobile devices that will actually interpret the barcode itself and search the resulting value of one field on the, on the application. So there's a number of different steps. There isn't a native support. In other words, you can't drop a scan control on your page, but there's uh, at least three different ways of, of making it happen. And people have, have tried it. Thank you. The next question, Horst, is there also a theme like iOS 7 with T-Mobile? Right. We have a built-in uh, theme which comes pretty much straight out of jQuery Mobile. There's, um, you can use a free online tool that's provided by jQuery called Theme Roller to create your own themes. And there are whole websites uh, out there with, with both free and for purchase Themes of all different looks and colors. So there's definitely uh, there's definitely lots of easy ways to get the exact look you want. We don't ship built in uh, a theme that looks like iOS 7, but it's, it's easy to get one, easy to apply. We might add um, several more themes to choose from in the future from now. So we'll probably see even some more things from upcoming as well. So the next question, since TD Mobile supports session cookies, would it in be integrated with load balanced cookie rather than IP based? Uh, this is another one that for some reason is not showing on my screen, so I kind of have to uh, just hear you say it out loud. So does it support or will it support what? Can you repeat the last part? Would it be integrated with load balance cookie rather than IP based? Uh, um, yeah, I have to say I don't really have enough um, low level understanding of IES's um, um, manipulation of these things to, to give a good answer to that. I do have a feeling though that it's not really something that um, would be determined within the TD mobile application, but would be more of a setup and configuration issue for IES. And the next one, <clears throat> does TD mobile support cookies, for example, to save username on login page? Well, uh, TD mobile requires cookies um, in order to run. Now, does it support um, creating your own cookies and looking them back up again within the code. No, there's no native support for that uh, at the moment. However, as I um, mentioned when I was talking about binding, there is native support for placing the values of binding into the embedded uh, browser database, which all uh, HTML5 suitable browsers now offer. So there's a very simple and easy way to store a username uh, away. But it would be through that mechanism, not through a cooking mechanism. So another uh, customer comment, excellent tool and no one near to this rapid application development tool. Thank you for that one. And with that, I think we did answer all questions. Oh, yes, one more. Is it possible to add one more complex sample application as is useful for converting our ERP applications to mobile values? Uh, yeah, we're always we're always looking for uh, for new sample applications. And for those who haven't played with TD Mobile yet, we um, and how many applications do you think we install, Martin, with the product? Uh, probably twenty or so. Yeah, I mean it's it's really nice. We have when you install TD Mobile, you get around twenty applications that um, 
that show you how to do all the different kinds of things that I've been talking about today. So this is just a lot of help right up front um, in getting started with TV Mobile. Also, we have an online uh, training academy uh, for TV Mobile. We have extensive help built in with white papers. So, yeah, talk to uh, one of our sales guys and let them know the exact nature of the kind of application we'd like to see. And I'm sure we're going to be adding a lot more sample. Thank you, Horst. I think we did answer all questions now. Well, that was a very good webinar with lots of participation. Very nice. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today for this TV Mobile webinar. And um, we are looking forward to talk to you very soon again in, uh, in the next TV Mobile webinar, probably. Thank you, and goodbye. Have a good evening or good goodbye. day, wherever you are.